Please stand for the arrival of the official party. Performing the duties of the Deputy Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, the Honorable Ashish Fazarani, and the National Chair of Employer Support for the Guard and Reserve, Mr. John Sampa. Please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Sergeant Vicki Golding, the District of Columbia Army National Guard, and the invocation by Chaplain Colonel Leah Bowling, the Air National Guard. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Aloha. If it is within your faith group tradition, please bow your head and pray with me. Eternal God, your love is all encompassing. Your mercy is beyond comprehension. And this morning, we acknowledge your presence. We are gathered here today at the Pentagon in this iconic place that is a well-known symbol of US military strength and security to honor and celebrate this year's Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award. These 15 nominees are employers worthy of being honored for their exceptional support to their employers, employees serving in the National Guard and Reserve. We thank you, O oh God, for these employers who continue to support and value their employees who also serve in the National Guard and Reserve, for without their support, a lot of our Guard and Reserve members won't be able to serve our country and do their mission. Continue to bless them, their companies, and their people. As the scripture says, honor to whom honor is owed. And so today, we honor them. We recognize them. We thank them the best way we can through the Employer Support Freedom Award. Thank you for the leaders and the sponsor of this event. Continue to give them wisdom as they keep planning events such as this. Let each of us bring forth what it means to be a true American. Let each of us remember to be of good courage and God shall strengthen our hearts of those that hope in the Lord. Bless each family represented here today. For we all we pray in their most holy name, amen. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Vasarani, Mr. Sampa, distinguished guests. Welcome to the 29th Annual Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award Ceremony. I am your Master of Ceremonies, Bruce Townsend. I am the Chief of Employer Engagement for ESGR. I'm honored to be with you here this morning 
For the past 52 years, employer support of the Guard and Reserve, better known as ESGR, has fostered a culture in which all employers support and value their employees serving in the National Guard and the Reserves. The Freedom Award is the Secretary of Defense's chance to say thank you to some of these employers. This year, the Freedom Award program received 1,758 nominations for the Department of Defense's highest honor for employers of National Guard and Reserve Component Service members. The 15 employers here today represent the best of the best. They go above and beyond to make sure their service member employees and their families are taken care of while they perform their military duties at home and abroad. When our service members return from military service, these employers help their service member employees through the transition back to their civilian jobs. The Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award is a way for us to pay tribute to the sacrifices and support of these employers. At this time, would all members of the National Guard and the Reserves please stand and accept our appreciation and gratitude for your service. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We would also like to take a moment to thank the senior military leaders and other distinguished guests for attending today. If you would, as I read your name, please stand and be recognized. Mr. Jeffrey Register, the Director of Defense Human Resources Activity. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Austin, the Deputy Director, of Army Reserve. Strauss is not here. Mr. Scott Fuller, the Deputy Chief, United States Navy Reserve. Major General Promotable Robert Harder, the Chief, Army Reserve. Ms. J. Margarita Devlin, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Operations and Management, Department of Labor, Veteran Employees Training Service. Mr. Ted Graham, the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Reserve Integration. <laughs> Major General Joanna Clyborne, the Assistant Adjutant General, Minnesota National Guard. <laughs> Rear Admiral Frank Schaefer, the Deputy Commandant for Operations, United States Coast Guard Reserve. Command Master Sergeant Israel Nunez, the Command Chief Master Sergeant, Air Force Reserve Command. <laughs> Dr. Julie Lockwood, the Vice Director of Manpowered Personnel, J-1, National Guard Bureau. <laughs> Mr. Ivan Denton, the Director, Office of National Programs, Department of Labor, Veteran Employee Training Service. Brigadier General Valerie Jackson, the Commanding General, 4th Marine Logistics Group, Marine Corps Reserve. <laughs> Brigadier General Marlena DeSell, California Army National Guard. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the National Chair for Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve, Mr. John Sampa. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. It's good to see everybody here today, and thank you again for being here, so, uh, supporting the ESGR. Mr. Vazirani, thank you for being here. I know with your busy schedule today, it shows your commitment and your support to ESGR, so we thank you for being here as well. And to all the civilian employers of the government and uh, our general officers, our senior enlisted leaders, family, friends, thank you for being here today because, again, we're here to witness some extraordinary employers that support their employees so they can do their job, be committed to their service in the National Guard and the Reserve component itself. So again, we, we want to thank you all. So on behalf of the 2,300 volunteers and the headquarters staff here at ESGR that I represent, we want to say thank you. And so with that, 
please join me and give me a big round of applause for those employers that are here today uh, representing their employee in receiving this prestigious award by ESGR. You know, your support that you, that you gave yesterday, that you give today, and that you're gonna give in the future is extraordinary because again, our reserve component is very busy. For the, for the last 24 years, basically, our reserve component has been very busy. And it, that ain't gonna change because today, as we see here today, there's nearly 50,000 reservists somewhere deployed on every continent of this world. In addition to those National Guardsmen and other reservists who call the duty to support their state, their community, during hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever the case may be, homeland uh, uh, disasters. So that's in addition to that. So to have extraordinary employers like yourself supporting your reservists so they can do what they signed up to do to support the national defense of our nation is very, very thankful because of you. Because again, our employers, our employees have to always balance three things every day, serving in the reserve component. That's their family, their civilian employer, and their commitment to the reserves that they signed up for. It's a balancing act, but because of your extraordinary support that you give them, make that balance very easy for them. It reduces that that stress in their lives. Because today, they may be holding their family in one hand, holding their employer the other hand, and their military service is in the air. Or one day it could be the family, military service, and you the employer in the air. But if they hold on to two of those things too long, one is gonna fall. And so because of your support, you, you actually make that balance much easier for them. So thank you for that. I too served in the Texas Army National Guard for 35 years. And I also retired as a Texas Highway Patrolman with 29 years. So I felt that because the last 20 years of my service, I was gone away from my employer for 13 years, serving somewhere in the military. I'm thankful for the employer that I work for because of the support they gave me. Because again, what the service member do are not in the news every day. And so because it's not in the news every day, it's like, what have you done for me lately? Because they do it passionately. They're dedicated to their service. And they might not tell you everything they do. But they're making tremendous sacrifice. And I tell everybody, those who are in the reserve component of our, of our military make sacrifice every day to wear that uniform. So again, thank you for your extraordinary support. And I ask you to be an advocate for the, our reserve component and the service member there that's serving in our reserve component. Let people know what they're doing so that their lives can be much more easier while they're serving and continue to serve. And if you know anybody who wants to become a volunteer, for the ESGR because those men and women are dedicated to the mission because they know how important the mission is. Please become a volunteer because our mission cannot be done without those volunteers. So again, on behalf of the 2300 volunteers and the staff here at Arlington DC that I represent, thank you again for being here today. Thank you again for supporting the men and women that work for you that's in our reserve component. So enjoy your time here and congratulations, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium, performing the duties of the Deputy Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, the Honorable Mr. Ashish Vazirani. Good morning. It's, uh, it's great to be with you today. It's uh, a little hard to follow Command Sergeant Major Sampa. Um, 
but I'll do my best. Uh, and thank you for that kind introduction. And thank you to the employer's support of the Garden Reserve team for your ceaseless commitment to reviewing nominations and honoring our recipients this year. The ESGR team is a collaborative effort of many talented and patriotic Americans, most of whom gave their time freely outside of their day jobs or other activities. In 2023, the dedicated professionals and more than 2,300 volunteers have contributed more than 185,000 hours of service, a testament to the commitment of the men and women who volunteer in service of our nation. I also want to thank the ombudsman who are a critical resource for our employers, service members, families, and the department. So thanks to all those people as volunteers. But thank you most of all to those who serve our country with distinction. Our Guard and Reserve components are valued members of our total force who have unique talents and skill sets that enrich our civilian and uniformed services. Not only do you apply your skills to our warfighting mission, but you serve as ambassadors of the Department of Defense at a time when military-civilian relations are especially important. We're here to recognize your employers, but we, the department, as well as your civilian employers, are guided by a mission to support your service. Your commitment to our national defense is a testament to your patriotism. But as you know, and as Sergeant Major Sampa just pointed out, balancing your military and civilian responsibilities is only possible with the support from people who appreciate the many demands on your time and your commitment to serve. Here at the department, the secretary and other leaders frequently talk about taking care of our people. We know, we know we need to take care of you because it's the right thing to do, because you are critical enablers of our overall force readiness. The organizations being recognized here today understand the value you bring from your military experience and the value the contributions you make to your community and your country. Their leadership values your leadership. These organizations and leaders go far beyond the requirements of the Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. They are contributing to our initiative to take care of, of you and have thought holistically about the support that enables you to meet your commitment to serve and advance our country's interests. When you carry out your military service obligations, whether it's for a training exercise or mobilization to active duty, you take leave of your families, your day jobs, your community, and more. Your employers have stepped into this breach to provide a full suite of support that removes or lessens concerns or distractions that may distract you from the military mission. Some of these are, actions are programmatic, while others are more individually tailored. Many of this year's awards recipients provide things like full pay to extend or for extended periods of time, or differential pay, support to your families, spouses in the form of outreach or childcare, and more. Let me share some examples of the ways in which these organizations are supporting those who serve their country in the Guard and Reserve. At Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota, leadership created a culture of care that has normalized concern for serving coworkers at the employee level. The organization's Military Associated Resource Group, which consists of military connected employees, as well as employees who wish to support their serving coworkers, actively support military family members provide guidance on company hiring and retention practices, and promote volunteerism in the military community. One example of this is when the group's coordinator helped an employer's sister secure benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs. Her late husband had died of exposure to Agent Orange, but she needed help navigating the benefits application process. With the coordinator's help, she was able to get burial expenses covered by the VA. At the Council Bluffs, Iowa Fire Department, firefighters on military leave maintain their duty position and rank. The department ensures they maintain perfect attendance records, which are tied to quarterly bonuses, and ensures all insurance and city benefits are maintained during military duty. A wall of heroes at the entrance of PSA Management Incorporated, a pro program and project management firm, honors serving and veteran employees. 
all 15 of the organizations represented here today, regardless of their size or area of focus, are best in class examples of how to do the right thing by employees serving in the Guard and Reserve. They're an exclusive company. Since the Secretary of Defense Employee Support Freedom Award was established in 1996, just 340 employers from around the country have been recognized. To give you a sense of the competitive nature of the award, the 15 organizations recognized this year come from a pool of more than 1,700 nominations. While the benefits and examples of each of this year's winning organizations might differ, what binds them all together is their special dedication to you, the members of the Guard and Reserve. The actions they have taken demonstrate their concern for you and your loved ones. Not only do they deeply understand the sacrifices required by service, but they have found ways to lessen them, to help you, your families navigate the challenges, work through the uncertainty, and serve your country with pride and distinction. I look forward to recognizing them all now. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to stand right there in that first blue tape. Thank you, Secretary Vazirani. We will begin honoring 15 employers who have provided exceptional support to their National Guard and Reserve members throughout the years. Mr. Sampa, would you please join Secretary Vazirani on stage? The first group we honor today is the small business category. Deployments of a member can often be felt more significantly by smaller organizations. Even so, the following companies here with us have gone above and beyond in support of their service members and our nation. Here are the small employer recipients for 2024. Bartlett Roofing was nominated by Chief Warrant Officer 2, Weston Kania, Army National Guard. Bartlett Roofing is a family-owned and professional restoration and roofing company headquartered in Boise, Idaho, and licensed to serve customers in Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. Founder Doug Bartlett states, I have a profound respect for the men and women who serve part-time in our armed forces. At Bartlett Roofing, we understand the unique challenges faced by those who balance their civilian lives with duty to our nation. Their commitment to our safety and security is an inspiration, and supporting them is an honor for our entire company. Accepting on behalf of Bartlett Roofing is Mr. Doug Bartlett, the founder and CEO. Actually, that's her, so. Cordia was nominated by Staff Sergeant Alec Landino, the Air National Guard. Cordia is a full-spectrum provider of energy services. Its mission is to provide a stable foundation for growth, progress, long-term sustainability, and prosperity in the communities we serve. Cordia says, Veterans bring integrity, work ethic, innovation, resiliency, and problem-solving skills to our workplace. With their training and experience, they bring maturity and technical excellence to everything they do. They are our glue, our consistent performers who represent the true backbone of our workforce. Accepting on behalf of Cordia is Mr. Earl Collins, the CEO. Core States Group was nominated by Staff Sergeant Kyle Vance, now Lieutenant Vance, Army National Guard. Core States Group is an engineering company offering architecture and interior design, civil and mechanical engineering, program and construction management, energy and technology services for restaurant, retail, financial, fueling companies, and as well as special projects. Core States Group says, we are honored and humbled to be recognized by the Department of Defense for supporting our Guard and Reserve members and their families who have dedicated an enormous part of their lives in service to our country. Our efforts pale in comparison to theirs in their selfless dedication. The very least we can do as a company is support them wholeheartedly. Accepting on behalf of Core States Group is Mr. David Dugan, President and CEO.
PSA Management Incorporated was nominated by Sergeant Dale Race, First Sergeant Dale Race, Army Reserve. PSA Management is a national recognized program project management firm. It is 100% minority owned and operated. PSA Management CEO states, I have the utmost respect and admiration for our United States military. Although I was unable to serve in the military as I was born and raised in Nigeria, when I moved to this country to further my education, I knew I wanted to show my support. At PSA, we show our dedication to the Guard and Reserves as they have so selflessly dedicated themselves. We have seen firsthand that by hiring Guard and Reserves and veterans, we are adding a level of world-class individuals that are very skilled in leadership, teamwork, adaptability, and with the highest level of ingenuity. Accepting on behalf of PSA Management Incorporated is Patrick Aliu, the President and CEO. Sherpa 6 Incorporated was nominated by 2nd Lieutenant Ella Forbes, Army National Guard. Sherpa 6 is a service-disabled veteran-owned small business engineering company delivering advanced solutions that combine technology, ingenuity, and engineering. Sherpa 6 states, Sherpa 6 takes immense pride in our commitment to the brave men and women serving this nation through the Guard and Reserve while holding full-time jobs with us. Sherpa 6 understands and respects their sacrifices and will provide them the support to thrive in both roles. Accepting on behalf of Sherpa 6 is Mr. Joseph Dames, the CEO. Congratulations to these small companies who are doing big things for their guardsmen and reservists. In larger organizations, guardsmen and reservists often make up only a small percentage of the workforce. Even so, the large employers we recognize today have found innovative ways to individually support their service member employees and highlight their contributions. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota was nominated by Major John Lunieski, United States Air Force Reserve. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota is a national provider of health plan services. BCBS President Dana Erickson says, I know I speak for all of our associates by saying it is a privilege to work alongside so many dedicated and inspiring individuals with ties to the military. We continue to strive to hold our policies, programs, and culture reflect the values we uphold for those who serve in both civilian and military roles. Accepting on behalf of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota is Dana Erickson, the President and CEO. Fulton Bank was nominated by Colonel Brett Gagnon, Army National Guard. Fulton Bank is a $24.6 billion financial services company headquartered in Pennsylvania. Fulton Bank states, at Fulton, we stand with our military community recognizing the invaluable contributions of our Guard, Reserve, and Veteran Team members. Through initiatives like our military internship program, comprehensive training, mentorship opportunities, and Veteran Employee Resource Group, we work to ensure that veterans and active duty service members receive the support and resources they need to thrive in the workforce and beyond. Accepting on behalf of Fulton Bank is Mr. Kurt Myers, the Chairman and CEO. Kiwid Infrastructure Company was nominated by Lieutenants Charles LeBaron and Nazareth Ng, United States Army Reserve. Kiwid is one of North America's largest engineering and construction companies. Kiwit's leadership states, at Kiwit, we're proud of our long history supporting employees in the National Guard and Reserves. These talented people thrive in our values-driven culture, and their specialized skills and experience help Kiwit deliver some of North America's largest, most complex construction and engineering projects. 
We were honored to have them in the Kiewit family and thank them for their continued military service. Accepting on behalf of Kiewit Infrastructure Company is Ms. Allison Manning, the Senior Director of Personnel. Navy Federal Credit Union was nominated by Staff Sergeant Faith Kaysberg, U.S. Air Force Reserve. Navy Federal Credit Union is a member-owned and not-for-profit credit union. Its mission is to always put its members first. The NFCU says, Guard and Reserve employees bring skill sets, experiences, and values that align with our organization. They offer insight into our service members' needs through their shared experiences. Supporting our Guard and Reserve members fulfills our mission and demonstrates our values. Accepting on behalf of Navy Federal Credit Union is Dietrich Kuhlman, the President and CEO. SAS Institute Incorporated, or SAS, was nominated by Captain Sean Mobley, U.S. Army Reserve. SAS Institute is an American multinational developer of an analytics software. It develops and markets a suite of analytics software which helps access, manage, analyze, and report on data to aid in decision making. SAS Institute states, Captain Mobley and those who serve in the Guard and Reserve bring to SAS extraordinary levels of teamwork, creative problem solving, strategic thinking, and hard work. It is a privilege to work alongside these brave employees, and they have our unwavering support for their service and sacrifice. Accepting on behalf of SAS Institute Incorporated is Ms. Pat Brown, the Executive Vice President and Chief Legal Officer. Congratulations to these outstanding large employers who are doing so much for their National Guard, Reserve, and Veteran employees. Thank you for understanding the critical need to help them put their skills to work in the civilian workplace. This year's five public sector honorees uphold the law and provide critical public safety and municipal services. They are the epitome of public circus, servants. The Council Bluffs Fire Department was nominated by Master and First Sergeant Anthony Watalovich. Council Bluffs Fire Department provides fire protection for the city of Council Bluffs, delivering a full range of life safety protection for the 60,000 plus residents who live in Iowa's eighth largest city. Fire Marshal Ford states, we are always looking to hire personnel who bring unique skills and valuable life experiences to our department. I can't think of a better example of these types of individuals than our past and present veterans. We have a saying at CBFD, serve first. We understand as an employer that our nation's veterans understand that motto better than anyone. Accepting on behalf of the Council Bluffs Fire Department is Fire Marshal Alex Ford. The League of Minnesota Cities was nominated by Colonel Patrick Arneson, U.S. Army Reserve. The League of Minnesota Cities is a government-affiliated agency where Minnesota cities and state employees can find city-focused vendors, find items wanted for sale, list city job opportunities, and obtain legal information and post requests for proposals. The League's executive director states, at the League, we proudly support our military employees because we recognize the important skills and experiences they bring to the table. Their leadership, resilience, and commitment to service align perfectly with our organizational values. Embracing our service members' talents enhances our organization and helps drive our success. Accepting on behalf of the League of Minnesota Cities is Mr. Luke Fisher, the Executive Director.
The Orange County Sheriff's Office was nominated by Petty Officer First Class Pedro Rivera, U.S. Coast Guard Reserve. The Orange County Sheriff's Office is the chief law enforcement agency for Orange County, Florida. The office serves Orange County's population of over one and a half million residents and over 44,000 businesses. Sheriff Mina states, at OXO, more than a quarter of our new hires over the last five years have brought their military experience with them in service to our residents and visitors. We proudly support our employees that serve in the Guard and Reserve and are grateful for this prestigious recognition. Accepting on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office is Sheriff John Mina. The Shelby County Fire Department was nominated by Sergeant First Class Angel Fagans, U.S. Army Reserve. Shelby County Fire Department serves to protect the lives and property of the people of Shelby County, Tennessee from fires, natural disasters, and to save the lives of providing emergency medical services. Shelby County Chief Benson says, at Shelby County Fire Department, our commitment to supporting the armed forces is a cornerstone of our values. We proudly count numerous Guard and Reserve members among our ranks, heroes who not only serve our community but also our nation. Our support for military team members is a reflection of our immense respect and appreciation for their service. Accepting on behalf of the Shelby County Fire Department is Fire Chief Alvin Benson. Tucson Electric Power was nominated by Sergeant Brian Flores, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Tucson Electric Power delivers safe, reliable power to more than 442,000 customers in the Tucson metropolitan area. TEP leadership offers Tucson Electric Power appreciates the service of our veterans and our active personnel in the Guard and Reserve. We know their support and defense of the nation comes at a sacrifice to them and their families. Here in Tucson, we will continue to do our part in supporting the contributions to our country. Accepting on behalf of Tucson Electric Power is Ms. Susan Gray, President and CEO Management Team. Thank you, Secretary Vazirani and Mr. Sampa. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a final round of applause for the 2024 Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award recipients. This part isn't in the script, but now all of you ESGR volunteers and staff, we're almost done. You can take that big sigh of relief now. Alas, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time to go. But before we do, we want to thank all of you for attending and to helping recognize these wonderful employers. We are indebted to them for their support of our National Guard and Reserve members, and by extension, the safety and security of our nation. As a special closing to our ceremony today, the 27th Wind Quintet from the District of Columbia National Guard will now play God Bless America, Please stand and sing along if you know the words.
Please be seated. Secretary Vazirani and Mr. Sampa, please join the 15 Freedom Award recipients for a group photo here on the stage. For everyone else, there will be a reception immediately outside in the auditorium in the corridor. Thank you all for coming and have a safe journey home. God bless. Thank you, sir. Well